flying fish are enigmatic. The almost contradictory nature of an animal leaping from its definitional habitat to soar through the sky over impressive distances captures the imagination. In the 240 million year old rocks of central China, there are fossils of fish that have wings that have a similar physiology showing that they too leapt from the sea to escape the jaws of ancient predators. This would make flying fish one of the oldest known gliding animals with a backbone, living around 240 million years ago, which is considerably longer ago than any bird flu. However, these fish were not the ancestors of modern flying fish, and in fact they were not even remotely related, and the miracle of the flying fish has actually evolved multiple times throughout history. Modern flying fish are actually many different species of fish, and the name really refers to a whole family named the Exocetids, that are most closely related to rice fish, the needle fish, and the halfbeaks. The Exocetidae family formed around 40 million years ago in a time known as the Eocene, where a lot of ocean life was actually quite similar to today. The KPG extinction that caused the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs 66 million years ago was also very devastating to marine life. The bounce back of marine life after saw the evolution of a lot of the big orders of fish that live today. Fish like tuna, stingrays, pike, and swordfish all started to fill the oceans after the dinosaurs had gone extinct. The fish fossil known from China existed in the Triassic period when the oceans would have been profoundly different to today. Alongside the fossils of flying fish are similar animals to today, like normal fish and shrimp, but there were also ancient mollusks like ammonites and they also share their habitats with large marine reptiles like ichthyosaurs. Ichthyosaurs are famous because although reptiles, they were so heavily adapted to the sea that they had a streamlined fish-shaped body, kind of like a dolphin. The name ichthyosaur meaning fish lizard. However, the ichthyosaurs that existed in what would become China at this time, like Waijo ichthyosaurus, appeared a lot more reptilian, at least in body shape. And the more famous fish-like reptile kind, like Ophthalmosaurus, are actually found a lot later in the fossil record in the Jurassic period. So these flying fish lived at a very different time. Like modern flying fish, there have been multiple fossils discovered showing they were many species grouped together and have been given the family name Thoracopteridae. It isn't known what modern fish group the Thoracopteridae were related to, but other than their adaptations to glide, they actually don't have any other similar characteristics with modern flying fish, showing they were not closely related. So two groups of fish achieved this amazing feat at completely different times, just happening to converge on the same body plan hundreds of millions of years apart. But modern flying fish are specialists. They have undergone significant changes throughout their body to make their flying abilities possible. Their fins are much larger and have a better shape to create lift, and their spine is more rigid, giving them a stiffer frame that makes them more aerodynamic. There is even a subset of flying fish that have four wings which are the most accomplished and refined of all the aquatic gliders, being able to control their change in direction and altitude and have been observed traveling over distances of no more than 400 meters. The way they leave the water is also actually quite complex and relies on a specific sequence of behaviors. First, they swim very fast next to the surface, then point their body upwards to leave the water. Before completely taking off, they glide just above the surface with their tail fin still being submerged, which is known as taxian. They have an elongated lower tail fluke that they bash back and forth, cutting beautiful zigzagging patterns through the water's surface, traveling a bit like a hydrofoil. They then leave the water entirely and have been observed gliding for the best part of a minute before returning to the sea. They can even use this to create additional momentum before gliding again without having to fully re-enter the water. Amazingly, fossils of the ancient Thoracopteridae, like Potanichthys, show that at least some species also had an elongated tail fluke, showing that they most likely went through these stages before getting completely airborne as well. Which means this may be a necessary process for an aquatic animal to be able to get completely free of the water and glide. Scientists have researched flying fish takeoff, studying a model of a flying fish in a program that mimics the properties of different fluids and they found that flying fish can achieve higher speeds while taxiing across the top of the ocean compared with being completely submerged. However, there was an even bigger difference in the amount of energy being used, and while traveling at the same speed, the fish used considerably less energy while taxiing compared with regular swimming. So being more efficient may allow the fish to stay in this position for longer than swimming at high speeds, giving much more opportunity to become airborne. So how has something so complex evolved multiple times? 
Well, first, there is a lot of evidence that flying fish leave the water to escape predators, and so it is likely that this is why they evolved their wings. Flying fish primarily feed on plankton, so they live in the open sea, usually swimming near the surface of the ocean where there is very little shelter or defence from attacks. They are also fairly small fish and have many predators that are usually fast swimming and large, like tuna, marlin, and dolphins. This makes them very vulnerable from attack. They are routinely observed leaving the water and becoming airborne directly to evade predators, and they are uniquely good at sensing creatures coming from beneath them. Fish have a system of sensory organs on their body known as the lateral line that give the fish various information about their surroundings, and can be used to sense attack from predators. The lateral line on flying fish is lower than normal, suggesting they are specifically sensitive to attacks coming from below. Predator avoidance is something that nearly all small animals have to deal with, so this being the primary evolutionary driver behind flying fishes would explain why they have evolved more than once. Unfortunately, the fossil record for Exocetids is quite poor, and there aren't any fossils of a transitionary stage between fish and flying fish that clearly shows how these animals developed their unique features. However, other close relatives of Exocetids and some unrelated fish offer clues into how they may have evolved. There are many species of fish that live their lives near the ocean surface that have adapted to leap and even skim across the water surface to escape the jaws of predators in a behaviour that is not too dissimilar to flying fish. One group of animals that has members that are quite adept at leaping from the sea are the halfbeaks, which are very closely related to flying fish. Although there are some freshwater species, most halfbeaks are open ocean swimmers and heavily adapted to live near the surface of the ocean. They live in a similar habitat and have a similar diet to flying fish, eating plankton and other small creatures. From a distance, they look a bit like a tiny swordfish, but actually their beak is an elongated bottom chin, and their top jaw remains small, free and movable, which allows them to easily feed from the very surface of the ocean, and they sometimes leap from the sea in schools. However, what's more is there are actually two species of halfbeaks that have developed wings and can glide, similar to flying fish, although they do not have the same degree of control as flying fish and do not glide over such long distances. Genetic analysis of flying fish and halfbeaks show that flying fish evolved from the halfbeaks, but interestingly not from the flying ones, and although very closely related, the flying halfbeaks are actually just another group of fish that evolved to glide on their own. Certain key genes associated with the pectoral fins of fishes have very rapid growth rates in flying fishes that allow them to grow their pectoral fins at a much faster rate relative to the rest of their body compared with other relatives that don't glide. Study has shown that these same genes have been altered in flying halfbeaks as well, but independently, showing that their gliding abilities are just convergent evolution. So it is known that flying fish evolved from small fish that live in the open sea near the surface with no shelter and have a well-documented behaviour of leaping from the sea in order to avoid being snatched by predators. Having pectoral fins that are just a bit bigger could mean they were able to stay airborne for just a moment longer which would increase the chances of surviving another day, creating a selective pressure for larger pectoral fins in these animals, creating an opportunity for highly advanced gliders to evolve later down the line. Similar to flying fish, the ancient Thoracopteridae flying fish also don't have a great fossil record for intermediate forms, showing exactly how the transition played out. However, there are Thoracopteridae fossils known that don't have wings, thought to be wingless relatives and certain characteristics in their skull show that they would have been surface dwellers too, and may have lived in a similar way to halfbeaks and flying fish, meaning that leaping from predators like ancient marine reptiles may have been the driver that spurred on their evolution as well. So being a small fish in a giant scary ocean forced many different fish down this miraculous evolutionary pathway. So these creatures may be fascinating, but from an evolutionary perspective their existence was definitely not down to luck. Thank you for watching. A big thank you goes out to all my patrons, especially the big contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.